Welcome to week 7's first lecture. We have been looking at asset pricing. In the last week, we looked at uh, a very preliminary model of how assets are priced in the economy. It was called capital asset pricing model. Now in this week, we are going to look at a, uh, another model, which is kind of a variation on capital asset pricing model. So it is called as consumption-based capital asset pricing model. And then we will look at uh, the concept of equity premium puzzle. So why are we looking at consumption-based capital asset pricing model? Well, we're kind of, we're trying to understand how optimum decisions of consumers affect uh, the prices of various things in the economy. We definitely know that depending upon what and how much the consumers decide to consume of a particular commodity, uh, the price of that commodity would be affected. The same would be about the assets in the economy because assets in the economy are purchased by consumers in order to smooth consumption. To capture this idea, we are going to talk about asset pricing with risky consumption. And then we will go on and talk about the equity premium puzzle. So if you remember our uh, optimal consumption savings problem that we did uh, in the first couple of weeks, you know that a consumer in each period balances the allocation of wealth between current consumption and the savings that support or augment future consumption. The idea being that the consumer prefers a smoother consumption part or path over his lifetime than a choppy one. So the optimal savings rule that we derived was simple. The utility from additional dollar of consumption today must be equal to the utility from the expected future consumption that can be financed by saving that dollar. So it's again the same idea of marginal uh, sacrifice should be equal to the marginal gain uh, that you would have. Now, uh, in reality, we can put, uh, we can save in variety of ways and that in itself would affect our consumption savings decision. For simplicity, we had assumed just there is one rate of interest uh, and then we solve the problem. But in reality, uh, the rates of returns and interests are different for different assets and they might also differ according to uh, characteristics of the consumer. So let's, so uh, the optimal consumption savings problem would have uh, uh, or its solution would depend upon what kind of assets and what kind of returns are available. However, it is also true that the, uh, that uh, the consumer's own decisions will also affect the price of these assets. So let's say that there are risky assets uh, that are available and uh, you wish to increase expected consumption growth by allocating some of the savings to a risky portfolio. Now the first important question is what do we actually mean by risky asset? So how do we measure risk of an asset? We have one answer for this question uh, when we had asked it in relation to the, con to the capital asset pricing model. Uh, there we looked at the covariance between the rate of return on the asset and the market rate of return as a proportion of variability of the market rate of return. So we were basically talking about the covariance between the assets return and the market rate of return as a proportion of how much the market rate of return varies. Now here, because we are specifying an objective uh, for why the consumer is saving, uh, the risk of an asset or a portfolio is more closely related to that objective. So here the objective is consumption smoothing. So uh, there is uncertainty in the world. Consumption might differ from one state to another. 
there might be shocks to your consumption for example you might lose a job or you might decide to give up a job in order to find a better one and so on so uh, there is a risk associated with consumption and you want to uh, save in such a way that you are able to tide over these consumption shocks to ensure that you have smooth consumption uh, over your lifetime. So therefore the risk of an asset or a portfolio here uh, is more closely tied to the consumption smoothing than simply the variability uh, of the rate of return uh, of an asset or relative rate of return uh, compared to the market. So think about this statement. So I'm looking at consumption risk. So it means that consumption risk comes from the risk to my income, right? So uh, given that additional income uh, would be more important in difficult times than additional income in good times, an asset that has a positive covariance with consumption growth will be deemed risky from consumption smoothing point of view because such an asset will give you additional income in good times when you actually do not need it. You need the additional income when your consumption growth is down, which is a difficult time and that asset would be really valuable then. So we are going to use this insight to figure out the asset pricing uh, with risky consumption. Intuitively, if you look at uh, asset pricing in this way, then the equilibrium risk premiums would be higher for assets that exhibit higher covariance with consumption growth. So, uh, the reason I said it intuitively because uh, it clearly says that I would prefer an asset which uh, which either does not vary with my consumption growth or varies negatively because if my consumption growth is higher, I do not need actually higher or additional income, but I definitely need it when my consumption growth is lower. Therefore, if, you, if an asset uh, exhibits higher covariance with consumption growth, uh, then in order for me to buy it, uh, you would have to give me a much higher rate of return than an asset who is going, which is going to help me tide over my consumption shocks. So uh, let's work out this theory. Let's say that the risk, uh, the risk premium. So here, all the capital R's are basically excess returns, and the small r is the actual return on an asset. So what I'm saying is ex expected excess return on an asset uh, is a function of some coefficient beta. We will describe what it is and something called as RPC. Okay, that's what this equation says. Now let's see what it actually is talking about. So what we're going to, uh, so here we are saying C is obviously consumption. So it's a consumption tracking portfolio. Okay, so the idea is that we choose a portfolio with the highest correlation with consumption growth. So that's our baseline because that's what a highest correlation with consumption growth. Uh, beta IC is the slope coefficient. It basically tells you uh, the sensitivity of the excess returns Ri uh, to the changes in uh, the risk premium associated with consumption uncertainty. Because RPC is the risk premium associated with consumption uncertainty, measured as expected excess return on the consumption tracking portfolio. Okay. So here what we are saying is that if you are looking at an uh, at let's say an asset, let's say something like uh, an equity in Apple, then the excess return that Apple is going to get over uh, 
over uh, in general uh, the market depends upon how sensitive it is to uh, the risk premium that is associated with consumption uncertainty, which is basically measured as expected excess return on consumption tracking portfolio. So uh, we're going to do some manipulation here, right? So we know that risk premium on consumption tracking portfolio can be represented as expected excess return. Remember, excess return is denoted by capital R on the consumption portfolio, which is equivalent to the expected rate of return on the consumption portfolio minus a risk-free rate. This implies that the expected excess return on asset I is uh, depends upon the excess return on the consumption portfolio and beta i gives you the sensitivity of the excess this excess return to uh, the excess return on consumption portfolio so the equation to about here is basically uh, the equation of the consumption based capital asset pricing model and you can see that it is very similar to the cfpm equation that we uh, saw before we're showing that here. So uh, for the C CAPM, it was the same thing that the expected uh, excess return was uh, a function of expected excess return on the market portfolio and how the asset is related to that portfolio. So the only difference here is that the market folio portfolio in CAPM is replaced by the consumption tracking portfolio in CBC APM, consumption based capital asset pricing model. So, here the focus is on risk associated with consumption opportunities in different states and not on just risk associated with the market portfolio. And this happens because the optimal savings problem has a particular objective it is to ensure against the shocks to my consumption. So let's stop here. Uh, uh, please uh, do the first quiz before you go on to the second part of this video. Thank you.